Hey everybody. Um, so today we are going to go over autotrophs and heterotrophs. Today's going to be kind of a wrap up that goes through autotrophs and heterotrophs that we've been studying for the last three days. So this will be our last day that we really hit hard and focus just on autotrophs and heterotrophs. So let's start with our autotrophs. Now with autotrophs, we have two types of autotrophs. Our first one are the photoautotrophs. They will use the sun to produce their own energy, like glucose, which is the process called photosynthesis. A couple examples of photoautotrophs would be this tree, these different algae and bacteria, and this plant. All three of these examples are examples of photoautotrophs. They use the sun to produce glucose in a process called photosynthesis. This is our first type of autotrophs. Our second type of autotrophs would be chemoautotrophs. Chemo, which would be short for chemical, they use chemicals to make their own energy, like methane um, and some of the different gases that would come out of the earth. This is a process known as chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis would allow a bacteria, which are your most common chemosynthesizers, to produce their own energy and food source, such as glucose, from chemicals. A couple examples. This big, looks like, thing of boiling water is actually like a hydrothermal vent, and like the highlighted area around it would be different bacteria and organisms that actually feed off the chemical that is coming out of the vent in order to create their own energy. Another one is simple bacteria also that are able to use chemicals in order to create glucose. All right, so these are our autotrophs. Remember, there are two types of autotrophs. They are both producers, and one is the photoautotrophs, which use the sun, and the other are chemoautotrophs, which use chemicals. All right, next, we get heterotrophs. Now, just like in autotrophs, there are two types of heterotrophs. Our first type would be our consumers, which means they have to ingest and eat things um, that are living. So our consumers come in three types. We got herbivores, like this llama. We have carnivores, like this tiger. And we have omnivores. So herbivores will only eat plants. Carnivores would only eat meat. And omnivores can actually eat both. We are actually also known as omnivores because we eat meat or plant-based diets. Our second type of heterotroph are decomposers. Decomposers actually help break up things once they've died. So we have two types of decomposers. We have the detritophores, which feed off dead materials, so like this earthworm. And we have saprophytes, which absorb the minerals and nutrients that they need from once expired organisms. Now, this could be anything. It doesn't have to be an animal. It could be dead plants. It could be dead animals. It could be a little bit of both. They actually feed off the nutrients that are left over once something starts to break down and decompose, which means they're very helpful in getting rid of the natural trash that will accumulate. All right, so, so you know, we have two types of heterotrophs, consumers, which are broken down into herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, and decomposers which are broken down to the detritophores and the saprophytes. All right. And just a quick trying to remember, we can also go back to our first slide, just as a reminder of autotrophs, which are broken into photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. I hope this helped clear everything up. Our next activity is going to be making our slides a little bit more interactive 
so that we have a really cool study guide for when it comes time to take a test on this subject. All right, hit me up with your questions.